That's why the United States, Egypt, and Qatar are working around the clock in the region to secure an immediate and sustained ceasefire as part of a deal that leads to the release of all hostages being held by Hamas and other groups that will help us address the dire humanitarian crisis in Gaza. We believe we're close. We're not there yet, unfortunately. And this moment is one where the Security Council has a critical role to play. By adopting the resolution before us, we can put pressure on Hamas to accept the deal on the table. Colleagues, you don't need me to tell you that every day without a deal, meaning every day without a ceasefire, leads to more needless suffering. For more than 100 hostages, including a one-year-old child being held in cap captivity by Hamas and other groups, for innocent Palestinians in Gaza who have been displaced, who are starving, who desperately need peace. For Israelis who have continued to face missile attacks from Hamas, a terrorist group that set this conflict into motion on October 7th. Every day without a deal means more needless suffering. This resolution will move us closer to securing that deal and help us alleviate that suffering. And I urge all council members to vote yes, to vote for a resolution that at long last condemns Hamas for its horrific terrorist attacks and sexual violence, that makes clear that all civilians, Palestinians and Israelis should be able to live without fear of violence, that demands the protection of civilians in Gaza and stresses that a major ground offensive in Rafah poses a grave threat to civilians, even as we still work toward eliminating Hamas from all parts of Gaza, that calls on Israel to eliminate all barriers and restrictions to humanitarian aid, especially as the threat of famine looms large in northern Gaza that condemns calls to resettle Gaza and makes clear that the Palestinian Authority should have ultimate authority over Gaza. And that reiterates this council's support for a two-state solution. This is a strong resolution. It's the byproduct of exhaustive, inclusive negotiations. It reflects the consensus of this council and it does more than just call for a ceasefire. It helps to make, that, make a ceasefire possible. It would be a historic mistake for the council to not adopt this text. And I again urge all council members to vote yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do this, you will cover yourselves in disgrace. Consider once again, how will you look before the population of the Middle East in front of your own populations if you support this hypocritical initiative, which is designed to disorient the international community and essentially to undermine the authority of the council, uh, making sure that it cannot have an impact on the situation on the ground, that this council will not be able to have uh, an impact of the situation on the ground to ensure that it not get in the way of the White House? Are you willing to play into their hands when it comes to this unsavory spectacle? The Russian Federation will not do this. As a permanent member of the UN Security Council, as one of the founders of the United Nations, we recognize the historical global responsibility we shoulder for the maintenance of international peace and security. We cannot allow the Security Council to become an instrument instrument in the advancement of Washington's destructive policy in the Middle East. If this resolution is to be adopted, this would definitively close the door when it comes to discussions about the need for a ceasefire in Gaza. This would free the hands of Israel and it would uh, result in all of Gaza and its entire population having to face destruction, devastation, or expulsion. We are not guided by what is 
convenient for Washington and satel satellites, the satellites who raise their hands following instructions from Washington. We do not follow this. What we, what guides us is what is necessary for the Palestinian people and what helps to advance peace. We call upon the membership of the Security Council not to allow this to occur, to vote against the U.S. draft. Mr. President, for the United Nations Security Council to ultimately be in a position to deliver upon its mandate for the maintenance of international peace and security, a number of non-permanent members of the Security Council have drafted an alternative draft resolution which stipulates black on white the demand for both a ceasefire and the unconditional release of hostages. This is a balanced and a, a political document. We see no reason for which the membership of the Security Council, for the members of the Security Council not to support this, unless a ceasefire and the release of hostages is not part of their plans. This is an attempt to allow the Council to comply with the noble functions that have been vested in it. And I call for you not to let this opportunity slip away. Thank you for your attention. I thank the representative of Russian Federation for their statement. I shall put the draft <coughs> I shall put the draft resolution to the vote now. Will those in will those in favor of the draft resolution contained in document S twenty twenty four two hundred thirty nine please raise their hand. Those, again, uh, those against, those against. Abstention. The result of the voting is as follows. 11 votes in favor, three votes against, one abstention. The draft resolution has not been adopted owing to the negative vote of a permanent member of the council. I now, I now give the floor to those members of the council who wish to make statements after the vote. I give the floor to the representative of the United States.